Hey guys, so today let's look at a simple way to increase the resolution of uh, your grain sims and to be creating clusters. So this is something that very often comes in production. You want to create some kind of a soil uh, type of thing uh, or sand or whatever. And it's um, very convenient to define your clusters and uh, behaviors at a lower resolution and then increase to a higher resolution when you want to render. So uh, basically the way you're going to be doing that is that we will define our um, constraints and grains, lower resolution, using uh, the uh, grain source uh, to create the constraints and some noise to paint the strength. Um, then break the constraints where some tension happens and use um, velocity volume derived from the velocity of these points to increase uh, the number of uh, points to basically get much more um, points to follow that velocity field and increase the number. So we can start with the grain source which is creating the points and the lines and it's very important to um, kind of realize what's going on behind the scenes in here. So uh, the black dots here are the points that the grain source is creating. They have the P scale which is um, connected to the separation, so this is uh, helping out the grain solver basically figuring out, to figure out the collisions in between uh, in between these particles. Then uh, you get the create explicit constraints option, which is creating the other uh, geometry, which is the these polygon primitives here. And these hold the information for the constraints. So each of these is anchored at two points on, the, on its two sides and it holds the strength and the rest length uh, data. So the strength is uh, going to be used for uh, basically how uh, easy this is to break and the rest length is uh, something that the distance constraint is using to uh, be able to know what distance between the two points on its two sides it should be preserving. That's kind of a good way to think about it, I think. Now to be able to easily paint on that um, it's very convenient to use a uh, noise. Let me go to my visualizer. So hopefully this works. So we can just hit stand here, and I think this is the attribute that I. Set. Okay, for some reason it was not really working, but anyway, so the um, uh, noise, uh, attribute noise is very convenient uh, in kind of painting um, your attributes. It's very, it's visual, it's easy to tweak. Um, it's quite, quite great. So um, I use that a lot and um, I just remap it with a ramp afterwards. Uh, it's a very, very, very simple text expression uh, to be able to create these, you know, well-defined islands. I really want to have some clusters which are quite um, steady, you know, resilient, and stuff in between them, which which is breaking up. And that's why these cellular noises are quite good. Um, they create these nice islands that are separated by other stuff. Uh, they don't have like these large contiguous shapes, uh, but islands. So um, this is uh, going on the point stop. That's how the attribute noise works, and. Here we are visualizing something that does show on the lines, but this is not because there is anything on the lines. So you can see strength on lines is just an attribute that uh, the grain source is creating, but it's uh, it's one everywhere. So what we can see here is that uh, the strength attribute on the points getting interpolated across you know on the lines. So to send this data to the uh, lines to the constraints, we need to promote the attribute. 
uh, that we have just created with the noise. And once this is done, you can see here the strength is very. And that's pretty much our grain source. So uh, the dotnet um, is nothing uh, spectacular. Um, the pop grains is having um, a balance of uh, the frictions and the collision weights. Um, the explicit constraints weight is off by default, so I have turned up in here and I have turned up the stiffness. And the break constraints is on, which is enabling these dark areas, which I visualize here with the pop color by getting the strength onto the uh, color ramp. Uh, and the, yeah, the break constraints is enabling the dark areas to lose their uh, constraints. So you can see here the lines in between the black things are disappearing very quickly after they hit. And the white are remain. Uh, you can tweak that as much as you like. Um, the key part is that the uh, solver is iteration based, so uh, these constraint iterations and your time steps are very important. Um, very few time steps will make it too jiggly, not gonna be able to preserve the stiffness too much. So you could uh, let it use more time steps, which is fine when you have a low resolution simulation that you want to control easily. Now that's the base sim. Working quite good. So the next uh, thing would be to advect particles on that um, um, simulation. And in the dotnet we have uh, advect by volumes. And this is using a, a velocity volume to move particles. And you have a few options and there is a lot of very interesting things you can do in here, but I'm going to stick to the basics uh, for this one. So I'm just going to be using the velocity from the uh, particles that we have just created in the base sim. And uh, to produce this velocity, um, I can get rid of all the lines, just uh, be left with the points. And these do have all the um, attributes that are coming from the dynamic sim. Um, you could clean this up so you only have the attributes that you need. In this case, I only need the position and the velocity, but uh, these are a few, you know, enough points. So it's not really going to be a major hit on your cache drive if you leave it for like a small number of points. But anyway, you can create a um, field using the volume rasterized attributes. So it creates a VDB that you can um, conveniently display using the um, volume slice, for example. And the volume rasterized attribute has a um, particle scale um, parameter. So what this means is that you get the particles from the input simulation um, splatting their attribute on the VDB in a certain scale, like you can see the particle here. Um, that, that, that has one thing in the in the middle and then you know, it has splatted around. Now, this is bringing a very important uh, thing to consider. So, if I just use a small radius field, I'm going to be able to have a lot of detail because you can see there is plenty of diversity in here. So, let's say we leave this at 1 and go to the .NET to see what's going to happen there. And you can see that some of the points are actually being left behind. Um, so, this happens because all of the uh, points that um, you know some, uh, that happen to, to land outside of that field after the velocity and position have changed because you know their new position is going to be their old position plus the new velocity uh, but the particles would sometimes land outside of that field and here we don't have any velocity so they would just stay there now to fix that you can increase the scale <coughs> sorry so you can increase that scale, which is going to make the field you know, cover much more area, which will cover for these particles which happen to land outside a little bit. But this is going to ruin all your interesting detail inside. So, so to amend that, you can use a combination 
where you have a big field, a, a field which with, with a big radius, a field with a small radius, and you can combine these two. <clears throat> and um, there is a very handy um, replace A with active B <coughs> option in the sorry in the VDB combine which is going to let you preserve the high resolution detail here and the, the um, expanded area of the blurred field. So that's what I'm going to be using for the velocity volume. And then uh, the emission is quite simple. I get the initial geometry that I started with and I do a nice offset and points from one. So here you can dial in the amount of points that you need. And you can even partition that with a different jitter seed, so you can have a few takes that um, cache a different simulation and then load them up all together and render them together. And in .NET, um, you get all of them in the point source, or just getting all the points that were emitted. And advect by volumes is uh, getting the velocity field that we have just um, created and using it for the velocity of these new particles. Um, the only other thing I do is that I get um, uh, another attribute, the strength, uh, through another volume uh, onto these particles. Now, why do you need another volume? Because uh, when I create these particles in here, they are in no way connected to the things that happened when I was emitting my first particles. So I have to transfer the information somehow. And because you don't want to search between you know, each particle and its neighbors, which is an expensive operation, you uh, create another uh, rasterized attribute, uh, so you get VDB from strength, um, and it's gonna create a volume that you can sample in the .NET, and you can say, okay, uh, get me this uh, field and um, make the color of these particles uh, be picked up from that field. So now uh, that's the reason that I can see the uh, grays and uh, the darks and the brights in here, uh, picked up from that field. Now it's uh, important to say that this is a very efficient operation, so uh, you can see it runs pretty much, you know, very quick uh, with a much larger amount of particles, but even if you put millions through this, it's uh, efficient enough uh, just vecting particles through the volume that you can do it very quickly. There is no um, interaction here in between these particles, which means everything can be uh, done in parallel and um, even partitioned, as we described, which is very fast. So it's quite an efficient approach. Uh, we can take this uh, further from here by uh, using some more interesting setup for the gains. Uh, Velm, for example, can allow us to create much more elaborate constraints in between these uh, gains and we can also, even with the grain solver, create uh, some attachments to geometry and combine these with uh, rigid body sim from Bullet, which is something that we might do on, a, on another video. So thanks and see you next time.